in Ellenboro, North Carolina with Beth Collins of Ride America and I wanted to take an opportunity to introduce you to America, a mechanical horse, and her purpose is to teach us better biomechanics when we're riding. So Beth, tell us a little bit about the horse. Well, as you said, they're built in England and uh, they're completely interactive with the rider. So the hands, leg, and seat of the rider cause the horse to walk, trot, or canter, just like you would on your real horse. Right. And uh, she's a dressage simulator, so we have um, a medium trot and a working trot and a medium canter and a working canter okay. um, as far as her different gates and only one walk. But it's a, it's a wonderful tool to help riders gain confidence, to realize where they are lacking as far as their, aid, their natural aids go, where mm -hmm. they're imbalanced and things like that. So it's a, it's a great tool for learning. All right. And you do clinics around the country to, to let people I do. practice on her? I do. We have clinics around the country. Um, usually you can keep up with where I am at and find out the contact information for the people hosting the clinics on my Facebook page on Ride America. Okay. Very good. So you're going to give us a demonstration of what it's like to ride her? Sure. All right. She's tall. She is. <laughs> She's 15 too. And she weighs 1,200 pounds, just like a real horse. <laughs> so she's capable of doing um, walk canter transitions and canter to halts and all the different upper level movements of dressage. Okay. That's her canter. Nice. Yeah. She is good for people who are fearful, mm -hmm. or if they've never cantered, or if they've fallen off when they cantered. So mm -hmm. it's uh, even for something like that. And I've, I've even rehabbed a few people who've had hip replacements. Um, we did a little bit of work with Wounded Warrior, right? And so that's a nice. It's a you know has other uses outside of just helping riders with their with their uh, position. Very good. So you, when you squeeze your legs or change the weight, you cue right, her, just right. like you would a real horse? Yeah, just like a real horse. And what's interesting is the, the better you're balanced and the, and the lighter your aids are and the, the more congruent your aids are, then the better she goes. Okay. So believe it or not, I mean, it looked fairly simple. You get on, you give her a little nudge with your leg and off you go. There, there are a lot of people who can't get her to go and there are a lot of people who can't get her to stop right. because they're a little bit imbalanced. And so I help them with that. And mm -hmm. um, the beauty of that is that I can work at all the gates, mm -hmm. something your, your instructor cannot do. They right. can't run along next to you and say, hey, sit heavier on your left seat. Um, <laughs> right. But it's wonderful because it, it really helps retrain muscle memory. You can work on just yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, that never happens when you ride your real horse. You have to work on the horse. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and I get a lot of really nice feedback from people who go and they, they try the things that I've told them um, on their real horses and have a lot of success. Very nice. Yeah. So do you use it mostly for um, people that are beginners or just across the board? Across the board, actually. Um, it, it is a good thing for beginners. I'm mm -hmm. not going to say that it's not. I think that the people who gain the most insight from it are people who've been riding for a while um, at up more upper levels uh, and they ha are having an issue. You know, their horse won't pick up its right lead, which sounds fairly simple, but believe it or not, you know, there's there's second and third level dressage people who have issues with one lead or the other and mm -hmm. uh, the horse breaking out of canter and stuff like that. And that's generally due to them and their position. Right? Yeah, yeah. 
And so what genres and, and disciplines do you work with with America? All of them, all of them. I mean, we, ha we are limited to a dressage saddle. However, you know, sitting properly is sitting properly, whether you're in a Western saddle, a jumping saddle, or a dressage saddle. Okay. Uh, so, so we have a lot of people who come, event riders and dressage riders. I've had a few Western riders. My trail riders have a little bit of fun on her as well. Um, I don't think they think about riding as much, and generally they don't have as many um, imbalances as people who take a lot of lessons just because when you're on a trail ride you're kind of relaxed. And how long have you had her? Um, this will be my uh, going on my sixth year of business with her. Um, so we're, we're humming right along, okay. helping as many people as possible. And they were originally designed for the racing industry, you were saying? Well, the first model that he came up with was for uh, racing, for mm -hmm. jockeys, and they actually, it's a, such a good I guess likeness of that, that the, the people in England that want to be jockeys have to have so many hours on the simulator, much like our pilots do here in the United States, where you have to, even though you fly airplanes for a living, you have to maintain a certain number of hours in the flight simulator to maintain your pilot's license. Right. Yeah. So do you, um, when you do your clinics, do people get a reservation and, and they do. come by time, like a doctor's appointment kind of thing? Yes, they do. And, and I do encourage people to come uh, early if they can. It's always fun to watch as many people as possible. It gives you an idea of what you're going to be experiencing and also to see that, hey, it's not just you know, this isn't this isn't simple, right? <laughs> it takes a little finesse, right? So, um, it, so it's a lot of fun, and people do. Yeah, you know, they sign up. Like, uh, I guess dressage people are the most used to that kind of a clinic, mm -hmm. where you sign up for your lesson, you come, you show, you know, you ride, and then you. Right. Yeah. Well, it's kind of nice because you get a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, so you really get a lot out of it. You do. And this really shows all your weaknesses to the trainer right then, so that's a exactly, good thing. Exactly, exactly. It, it, does, it does pick those out right away, and um, because of the feedback from the horse, you're able to see, oh, yeah, I guess I am doing that. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, obviously, if they knew they were crooked, they wouldn't be crooked. Right. So she looks so realistic. Do you holler at a horse trailer? I do, actually. We, she has her own little uh, fancy French Foutress trailer out there, and... Uh, and I, I get asked about her all the time, what breed she is. Right. You know, they, they can't get a good look through the window at her. So so do you have to have a Coggins on her? <laughs> well, you know, in Florida, I, I did mm. actually, my own fault, I got stopped at the checkpoint there because I went zizzing right through thinking, well, I don't have a live horse. I don't need to stop. <laughs> and they hunted me down with sirens and I was pulled over to my mortification and uh, then I had to explain to the man but I don't have a live horse in there to which he looked a little perplexed so then we had to open it and show and and I got a warning and by the time I came through the checkpoint on my way home after I had done my clinics down there they knew about me I bet <laughs> I stopped and everybody wanted to look in there at the, <laughs> at the pla as they were calling her the plastic horse. Oh my goodness! So. <laughs> well, that's an testament to her real likeness because she really looks real and her mane and tail are obviously real. She's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. This is my faux Frisian. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was thinking Frisian. She's even got a blingy bridle, which she is does. really cool. Yes, Amanda Taylor actually made me that of tailored tack and uh, the toe clap people, the matrix pad people. They donated this pad nice which is a wonderful piece of a uh, piece of equipment here Definitely. if you ever get a chance to try it okay well thank you very much for spending time with us this afternoon thank you i hope you guys enjoyed learning a little bit about america and what a mechanical horse simulator can do for you if you're an up-and-coming rider and beth can be reached at uh you can reach me on my cell phone 704-740-5990 mm -hmm. uh, okay you can follow me on facebook at ride america and the America spell with a K. Uh, and you can contact my email at padfootfarm dot, or padfootfarm at gmail. All right, very good. Thank you very much. As Miss Rodeo Virginia 2012, I had the opportunity to travel the country riding on many different horses and in many different saddles but nothing compared to coming home and riding in my, uniquely my, world-class saddlery saddle. From its unique dog flower tooling to the custom stirrups made just for me, the saddle fits me and my horses perfectly. So whether I'm out running barrels or in a parade, the saddle is both durable and beautiful. It can get the job done and still look good while doing it. I look forward to riding in my world-class saddlery for many years to come. 
The American Music Jubilee Down Home Christmas Show starts November 8th with all new songs, comedy, and stage design. This show has become more than just a tradition in Eastern North Carolina and has pleased audiences from 8 to 80. Experience this wonderful Christmas production. Watch the cast of the American Music Jubilee sing and play their hearts out for you. The spirit of Christmas will fill the air at the Grand Ole Rudy Theater in Selma, North Carolina. Go online to amjubilee.com and make your reservations or call that famous number, 1-877-THE-RUDY. This is one show you don't want to miss. Kelly, North Carolina today visiting Mary Miller Jordan and Lindsay Faith. And this is Lindsay Faith and Lindsay's quite a star. She won America's Favorite Trail Horse. There's been books written about her and she's a Briar model horse. Hi Mary. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. Well, we've been excited about this shoot for a long time because you've had quite a, a journey with these Mustangs. How in the world did you get started with doing this? Oh my goodness. Uh, a good friend named Jim Thomas came out to buy a manure spreader from us one day and uh, he was out here. Anybody that knows Mr. Jim knows that he's he's a talker oh, yeah. in a good way. Yes. <laughs> and he starts telling me all about the makeover program and I was sold. I was sold from the get-go and the very next year, that was 2009, and the very next year in 2010, they came out with the Supreme Extreme Mustang Makeover, which was the first makeover where you got to adopt your horse up front. They were older Mustangs. Lindsay was six when we adopted her. And the, the idea was to have a program to help older Mustangs find homes. Mm -hmm. So 2010, we, we did it. We adopted her. Um, she was six years old. We had 100 days to train her along with 100 other trainers. And then uh, we traveled out to Texas for the competition. And it she did phenomenal. I mean, you know, when I got her, I, I thought I was going to be getting a blank slate, you know, a clean slate. You know, this is this horse that's never been touched by humans, and, you know, how awesome is this going to be to mold her into the most, you know, the most brilliant horse that I can. And I get her, and it's like, you know how when you meet a person or an animal, and you just know they know more than you do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're just, they have this, like, knowing air about, I mean, she was so packed, and is so packed with information. And I think that was the biggest thing that was a surprise to me, is it, it, she wasn't a clean slate at all. Right. And um, it took me, I didn't have BLM halter or anything, and I, I don't know how to rope. I mean, I, that, you know, it was all just in the round pen, you know, spending time with each other, exchanging energy and getting her comfortable enough to, you know, to trust me enough to touch her. And um, it, it took a couple days for me to get the halter on her. And there were other people that had the halter on theirs in the first day. And I'm like, oh my goodness. But, you know, I've learned since we have seven Mustangs, she is extremely sensitive, um, much more sensitive than any of the other ones we have. But, you know, the absolutely perfect first Mustang for me because she taught me so much right. from working with her. Um, so we did the competition. Um, she did great. She ended up making the finals, which my gosh, you know, it is just to make the finals was huge. And we ended up 17th overall, um, which, you know, was was fabulous. At the time, it felt like a disappointment because I had gone in there with all anticipation of finishing in the very top. And, you know, but it was a, it was a mm -hmm. life lesson that the joy is in the journey, not not just in what you think your destination is, right. you know. Well, I'm sure with her being a six-year-old, she had learned a lot. I mean, she'd been surviving a long time in the wild. And she had, and she'd had a lot of babies, too. Yeah, Her okay. bags are very, and she actually, when she was gathered, she was in full. She, okay. she actually was pregnant, and, you know, I, I don't know where her baby is, um, but I, you know, I, I, the babies tend to get adopted quicker than the older horses, so mm -hmm. I feel like she would have gotten a good home. She's a bay filly is all I knew. But you could tell looking at her teats that she's had a lot of foals, and mm -hmm. I think that's part of the reason she's so observant and cautious, because she's had to be that way to survive and to take care of her offspring. Absolutely. So you finished 17th and mm -hmm. then you brought her home. Yep, brought her home and was a little bit lost for a while because my gosh, I'd spent three solid months just focusing on this, you know, training her and, and, and her training me and this competition. And I was very thankful when I found out about um, America's Favorite Trail Horse that AXA created, the uh, American Competitive Trail Horse Association. And it was basically kind of like American Idol for horses, right. um, for horse and rider teams. And we auditioned for it and, and we were one 
of 100 that were selected to be in the show after we auditioned. Ended up going back out to Texas. Seems like everything's in Texas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they did the filming and aired the show. And we, we uh, crossed obstacles out, out in the wilderness, basically, which is totally her cup of tea. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just, there were big slick rocks and through streams. And that's just, that's totally her. She was great. Right. Um, and so they filmed all of that, aired it on TV. They had celebrity judges. They had the Pirellis there, Guy McLean, who I am a forever a fan of, um, Ray Aris, quite a few, you know, celebrity judges that critiqued us, but they, the judges' scores didn't actually, weren't the reason, it, that wasn't how we got placed. It was people at home sitting on right. their couch voted voted for the, the ones that they wanted to win, and we were very blessed that we were selected the winners of that, which has just been so incredible because it's like catapulted all this other stuff. Um, after that, I wrote uh, my first children's book called Silver Mane, The Tale of a Wild Horse, which is about Lindsay's faith. Um, she's named Named after my daddy. My daddy's name is Lindsay, and faith for his faith in me and his faith in God, and and just that 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 incredible faith that he has. And Lenny was his childhood name, so her name is Lenny in the children's book. And I've also just recently finished a new children's book that is geared more towards uh, younger kids. That that you know Lenny is the star of as right. well. So she's just you know that that America's favorite trail horse win has been a blessing. Copy of the book, and how come? people buy this? Um, I have a new website and it's the title of the book, Silver okay. Mane, The Tale of a Wild Horse. All right. um, you can go directly to that and, and find the book and you know you can either do a check or card either way. All right, very good. And this Briar Horse model is Lindsay Faith's most recent claim to fame. So everybody in the world will forever know her and she's immortalized now. And if you notice, it even has the Wild Mustangs brand on it and this is her actual brand, which is a really cool thing. How in the world did she become a Briar model? Oh my goodness. Oh, uh, December of 2012 of last year, um, Briar contacted me. It was actually Christmas Eve. Um, what a present. They contacted and said that, asked if I was interested in the making a model of her. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm one of those kids that grew up surrounded by model horses, Briar model horses. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably had 200 of them. And my favorite one was Misty of Chincoteague because she's modeled after a real pony. Right. And so, I mean, to have, this is, it's just surreal. Words, absolutely. I, I'm, I'm rarely baffled for words, but I, I just, words just don't describe, you know, how I feel about this. It's such an honor. It really is. So, um, actually, just this past summer in July, they released the model at Briar Fest, mm -hmm. and we were invited. Lindsay's Faith came with me to do demonstrations and to sign models and meet the kids. It was a sold-out crowd, 7,000 people. It was amazing. It was amazing. And just to see all those children light up when they got to see the live horse, that was right. so cool. A lot of those kids that don't have horses, you know, most of the people mm -hmm. that come to Briar Fest are people they love horses but they're not they don't have them in their backyard and right. it just it makes you realize how blessed we are to have this opportunity and just how special it is to be able to share her with them and she was so good I mean she just dropped her head in their laps and they petted her and it, she was awesome that's awesome now where did she come from in the United States she came from White Mountain Wyoming um, that was that was her herd that she ran with in the wild. She was gathered as an older horse. She was already full grown. She had had babies and actually was in foal when she was gathered. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, you know, we adopted her through the Supreme. But that was that was where she was originally located from. And I've seen photographs there. And there's there's a photograph of a stallion. He's got bite marks all over him. You can tell he's been around for a while. He is colored up identical to her. I mean, and her silver mane is so unique. You mm -hmm. don't see that on a lot of horses. Yeah. He has everything to a T and I, oh, you know wow. he's got to be closely related so so neat absolutely well she certainly is beautiful and what are your plans for her next? Oh, we have quite a few um, places that we're going to be going to do meet and greets coming up over the next few months. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. Um, there's two different fairs that we're going to attend. And um, and then we have an event that's up in uh, the Ash, uh, Ashboro area. Uh, your Silver Linings is doing a grand opening that we're going to be at. So quite a few places that we're going to take her around, um, read some from the children's stories, and let some kids meet her and put their hands on 
corner and just recognize that you know that that she's real and 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 maybe they'll see some of their dreams through her i certainly lived out a lot of fantasies with that misty briar model so right. it would just make me make my heart smile to think that that another child was living out a fantasy of their own you know through her that's awesome and can people find a list of where you're going to be on your website? Yes, yes. On, on the Silver Line website? On the, the Silver, yeah, Silver Mane, The Tale of a Wild Horse, the book title. On that website, you can find, yeah, we'll, we'll keep that updated with where we're going to be next for All sure. Right. Thank you very much. We're back with Mary Miller Jordan and the next rising star in the family, Miss mm -hmm. Philly Kay. <laughs> Miss Philly Kay has agreed to show us a little bit about what she does on her pony and all the things that she's learning from her mom and these horses. So I'm going to hush and let you guys give us a demo. All right, Philly Kay Jordan, you want to take Squirt and find some letters in the arena? Okay, what letter, what, what do you want to find first? You want to find Philly Kay? K. Okay, K. Off to K. Do you want to walk or do you want to trot to K? Yeah. Of course. You going to tell Squirt to trot? Trot, Squirt. There's K. Is that K? Uh -huh. You want to point at it? Uh -huh. K. There's K. All right, let's see. What about, let's find, can we find Mama's letter? Okay. <laughs> What's Mama's letter? It's this way. It is this way. It's M. What an incredible journey that Lindsay Faith has been on since she left the wilds and came to Kelly, North Carolina to live with Mary Miller Jordan. It's amazing that a wild horse could not only be tamed and taught to ride and be a trail horse, but to become a television star, a book idol, and a briar horse model all in the same lifetime is just an amazing feat to have accomplished. And Mary Miller Jordan's quite a special trainer to have been able to do that. So I hope you've enjoyed the show today. And if you listen, you can probably hear the sound of Carolina hoofbeats. This episode of Carolina Hoofbeats TV was made possible in part by funding received from the North Carolina Horse Council, a North Carolina nonprofit corporation dedicated to representing and furthering the common interest of the entire equine industry in all 100 counties of North Carolina. Carolina Hoofbeats is brought to you in part by Newcomb Quarter Horses. Newcomb Quarter Horses with over 40 years experience. Find out how we can help you today. NewcombQuarterHorses.net and by World Class Saddlery, custom saddles, repairs, custom tack, and personal leather items. Find out more at worldclasssaddlery.com. And also by Carolina Hoofbeats Magazine, a free publication about the horse industry in North Carolina. Catch up on the latest issue at carolinahoofbeats.com. nothing else matters. My feet in the stirrups, I'm so happy. American Music Jubilee Down Home Christmas Show starts November 8th with all new songs, comedy, and stage design. This show has become more than just a tradition in Eastern North Carolina and has pleased audiences from 8 to 80. Experience this wonderful Christmas production. Watch the cast of the American Music Jubilee sing and play their hearts out for you. The spirit of Christmas will fill the air at the Grand Ole Rudy Theater in Selma, North Carolina. Go online to amjubilee.com and make your reservations or call that famous number 1-877-THE-RUDY. This is one show you don't want to miss. Rodeo Virginia 2012, I had the opportunity to travel the country riding on many different horses and in many different saddles. But nothing compared to coming home and riding in my, uniquely my, world-class saddlery saddle. From its unique dog flower tooling to the custom stirrups made just for me, the saddle fits me and my horses perfectly. So whether I'm out running barrels or in a parade, the saddle is both durable and beautiful. It can get the job done and still look good while doing it. I look forward to riding in my world-class saddlery for many years to come.